At first, Don wasn't sure what to say about that. Sylvia sounded as if she still liked both Harold and Antoine, yet those kinds of adult relationships were the sort of thing that he just didn't spend that much time thinking about, and certainly didn't understand very well. Don had to spend a few seconds thinking about that, which gave Sylvia the chance she needed to explain herself a little better. Antoine and I had been friends for a long time, and before Walter even made his decision, we had already decided that we wanted to spend the rest of our lives together. After he and Harold had their fight, we had to talk about whether we should go through with the wedding, and we decided that it might be better to wait and see if things improved between them. Things only got worse and worse, though. The rift between them just grew wider with every day that passed, and eventually we decided that enough was enough. I told Antoine that I wasn't going to let either of them destroy his chance for true love, or mine. So we got married. I told Harold what I was planning almost a week in advance, but he took it really hard. He wouldn't listen to me when I said that I wanted to give my all to Antoine. He told me that no one deserved me less than him, and that if I was really making such a foolish decision that he could never accept it. He took it really personally. He didn't even come to our wedding, and now he almost never talks to me anymore. I think all he sees is the rift between himself and Antoine, and he's convinced himself that I'm on Antoine's side. At that point, Sylvia fell silent, and she clearly didn't want to say anything more about it, but regardless, she continued after only a couple of seconds. Of course, I'd love for the two of them to make up and be friends again, but I can't picture either of them thinking like that. And in the meantime, they're tearing Arryn apart. Half of the warriors in town are following Harold, and the other half follow Antoine. And those two dislike each other so much, I'm afraid they're doing more harm than good. Our people are so divided right now that I can't even picture them working together anymore, not even to defend their own town. They both want to make our town strong, but they're only making us weaker and weaker. At that point, Sylvia stopped talking again, and it looked like she really wouldn't continue that time. But Don still didn't have much of anything to say, because he was still feeling pretty confused by the whole situation. No matter how divided they were, the fighters of Arryn were still incredibly strong, and it would have taken an absolutely monstrous enemy to endanger all of them, which meant that Don only really had one more question to ask. Who's Grant? It quickly became clear that Sylvia hadn't been thrilled by that question either, though she must have known that she'd have to answer it. Look, Sylvia said after hesitating for only a few seconds. Everything else I told you was personal, but I didn't want you to get too curious about it and put yourself in danger by staying here with us. Still, Grant is something that nobody from Arryn ever talks about with outsiders, and we've all agreed that he's a town's secret. Besides... When Sylvia started talking like that, though, Don knew that he was going to have to stand up to her again. She might just throw him out, but he knew that he couldn't quit until he'd gotten the answers he was looking for, so his eyebrows lowered in determination, and fortunately, Sylvia seemed to understand the meaning of that gaze. Don DeLay was committed to the course of action he'd chosen. For a few moments, Sylvia looked away from Don silently, and she was still looking away from him when she finally replied, as if looking at him would make what she had to say even more horrible. Seven hundred years ago, the town of Arryn was founded by less than two dozen settlers. The modern inhabitants of Arryn are all either descended from them or from immigrants to our town who wanted to learn our techniques of combat, like you. Back then, though, there was only one real fighter in Arryn, one person who was a hunter and a warrior, and according to the legends from that time, he was the greatest warrior who ever lived. His name was Grant. When Don heard that, he nearly fell out of his chair. At first, Don had assumed that Grant must be some kind of horrible monster or enormous serpent, after all, people did typically give names to creatures like that, especially when they were capable of causing huge amounts of damage. But it seemed that Grant was a human, and that was a huge shock to Don. Grant was the one who did all the hunting, and a lot of the work during the building stages of Arryn. Sylvia continued, however, not looking the least bit bothered by how shocked Don obviously was. I don't think anyone put more effort into building Arryn than him, and like the rest of us, he was raised on the values of honesty, judgment, charity, and self-discipline. Grant was a great hero to the early settlers of Arryn, and the official history books say that he cared more about Arryn than anyone. He'd been taught the difference between right and wrong, and he'd been taught above all else to never try to practice real magic or to make bargains with people who did. I think he cared too much about our town and its people, though, because while Arryn was still a relatively minor settlement, Grant did something horrible. Monsters attacked Arryn a lot more often in the days before our people put up the walls, but they could never beat Grant, and they almost never did any real damage to the settlement at all thanks to him. One day, though, Arryn was attacked by a dragon. It was at least 50 feet tall, and clouds of poisonous fumes erupted from its mouth whenever it breathed out. It was the largest creature that had ever attacked Arryn, and it's the only time in our town's history that a single fighter has fought anything that big or powerful. Grant's strength and skill were pushed to their limits during that fight because he'd broken two limbs by the time he drove his axe into the creature's throat. Grant had been badly injured, but he'd become one of only a few legendary warriors who'd ever beaten a Titan-class monster on their own. Most people would have been incredibly proud, but Grant was apparently ashamed, and it can't have made things any easier on him when the sorcerer appeared. 
Don froze when Sylvia said that, because although he'd heard of sorcerers from terrifying old stories, Troma had no history with them, which had made them seem like a very distant threat. Learning that one of them had visited Arn in the past was extremely worrying. The sorcerer said that he'd sent the dragon because he'd heard stories about a great warrior who could fight armies of monsters and still claim victory, and he'd wanted to test Grant to see if he was really as powerful as the rumors said, Sylvia continued. Of course, Grant tried to attack the sorcerer at that point, but he was much too injured, and the sorcerer's powers were too great. Once he'd proven that his magic was stronger than Grant, the sorcerer said that his name was Jairi, and that he was looking for someone who was powerful enough to serve as his emissary on a few errands. Jairi said that if Grant agreed to work for him, then he'd spare the rest of Arryn. I'm not sure whether Grant was afraid or not, because the legends don't say, but apparently Jairi gave Grant a strange plant, which he said could be ground into a powder and eaten and whoever ate that powder would be granted the power to be his emissary. He said that as mighty as Grant was, he needed to be even stronger, and that only gin magic could do that. The magical gin plant, he said, was the only way to obtain that kind of power. He also said that becoming a gin would make a number of things clearer to Grant. Then he left, promising to return in three days for his new emissary. That was when Grant betrayed Arryn. Although I'm sure he was trying to protect his town and his people, he knew the teachings of our religion, he knew that the taboos of righteousness existed for a reason, and that it was always wrong and very dangerous to consort with sorcerers, and especially to willingly take up the tainted nature of a djinn or other nightling. But for whatever reason, Grant accepted the power that Jerry had offered to him. The next time that Grant appeared, it was obvious to the people of Arryn that he'd changed. He was bigger, for one thing, and had started to treat his people a bit more coldly, though he still seemed to care about them and they still cared about him, in spite of his sins and his newly acquired disorder. The legends say that the people of Arryn tried to save Grant at that point, but I think that he probably faced some prejudice because of his choice. And before too long, Jairi appeared to give Grant his first mission. After that, Grant and Arryn didn't see much of each other for weeks on end. Grant was always out on missions for Jairi, and no one could talk him out of it. He'd just remarked that his people had no idea what kind of horrible power the sorcerer had. Unfortunately, it didn't take the people of Arryn more than a year to learn something about Jairi's power firsthand, because one day, while Grant was away on a mission, another titan monster attacked the town. By that point, the town's population had begun to practice the art of fighting, but they still weren't quite ready to fight a creature like that one. It was like a monstrous beetle with only a few vulnerable spots between its armored joints. Nearly half a dozen warriors died defending Arryn from it. Only a few people in town really knew much about that monster, even after it was slain, but nearly everyone in town was convinced that it had been sent by Jerry. When he returned to Arryn and heard about what had happened, Grant was absolutely livid. The survivors tried to comfort him, warning him not to rush into anything, but Grant stormed off across the fields, vowing to bring back Jerry's head for that betrayal. Nobody's sure what happened to Jerry after that, but I doubt that Grant succeeded because the next time the people of Arryn saw him, he'd been cursed with a type of madness which forced him to fight with every living creature he came across. A curse of madness? Don asked, suddenly feeling very ill. I didn't know sorcerers could do that. It's the only time I've ever heard of anything like it either. Sylvia admitted, however, with a nod. Normally, magic can't directly take away a person's free will. I think there may have been something in the gin plant, though, which made Grant more vulnerable to Jerry's magic. However it happened, Grant was sent back to Arryn in a fighting frenzy. He attacked the people and destroyed their homes. By working together, the people eventually succeeded in killing him, but not without a heavy loss of life and property. For a hundred years, people went to the grave of Grant to honor him for what he'd tried to do, but just as many went there to remind themselves of the danger of letting evil into their lives. Grant was still legendary, but people were starting to view him as a fallen hero, or even as an evil man who'd pursued power over the safety and unity of his people.